and welcome back to this. Nice. Today I will be listing my personal top 10 favorite books of all time. Now I've talked about in the past how I used to be a huge reader and then a couple years ago I fell into a rut and I just kept falling and falling and falling and couldn't get out until finally I read uh, Hank Green's book, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. That's the first physical book I've read in years and still after that I had a difficult time reading even though I used to be a huge huge reader and like chow down on like a like a book a week. But what really got me back in to reading was audiobooks. Now, Audible's not a sponsor, but you can be if you want to. If you're listening, I'll take your money. Yeah. But anyway, I, I got Audible and I started listening to, again, like an audiobook a week. I had four hours in the morning at work and I would just put in my headphones and I would listen to that until people showed up. I, I, I listened to so many books. I got a new job and now I'm trying to find time to to do it again. Now I kind of just listen to little snippets here or there in the shower or like on my on my way to my new job. That's kind of a tangent, moral of the story, always find a way to read. Let's commence with the top 10. Number 10 is Circuit the Freak by Darren Sean. Now I am going to just bundle every single one of those books of the series into just the one, number 10. I read these as a child. I started reading them in middle school and I think I think I was in late high school, maybe earlier when the final one was released. These are so, so good. It's like you graduate from Goosebumps to Circuit to Freak, graduate from Circuit to Freak into Stephen King. These are amazing, amazing horror novels about uh, like a child and then a teenage vampire. I tried to make a movie, it flopped super hard, but these books are so good. They shaped a lot of my childhood and got me into reading. Number nine is Divergent. Now, Divergent came in that whole big period where everything was like a young adult dystopian novel and then all of those got adapted into movies. I'm looking at like like Hunger Games, Divergent, Maze Runner, Fifth Wave, a, a, a lot of them, a lot of these types of things. But Divergent is a huge, huge standout. It came after the Hunger Games, I believe. The factions that it depicted in this were super well done. And then it got a huge twist in the third book, but I'm only gonna put the first one, Divergent, on this because the second book was okay. The third one sucked so bad. And then she wrote like four, which follows four, and I felt like that was just a cash grab and didn't even bother picking that one up. But this is super good. Get excited in these lists, say. Get out of breath. Number eight is Silver Linings Playbook, The Book. Now, if you remember from my movies, this is my all-time favorite movie. I didn't even realize it was a book until years later. And years after that is when I finally read it. It is very, very different from the movie. But the movie captures the essence of it. And it's a very strange book. And it's one of the few like adult books that I've actually ever enjoyed. If you ever watched the movie or if you watched my review on the movie, you kind of have an idea of what this book is because it captures the essence at least. But yeah, I, I, I don't want to go too much into it. Number seven is Ready Player One. This is a book that I listened to as an audio book. It was read by Will Wheaton. And he's phenomenal. It was perfect for this. I mean, he's like the quintessential nerd. And he's... He's got such a good voice for audiobooks. I don't know if he's done more, but I hope he has, and I hope he does more after this, because I'll listen to anything he reads. But anyway, I watched the movie before reading the book, or listening to the book, however you want to say it, and a lot of the time, it kind of ruins it. I wasn't able to get through the book five feet apart because the movie was such an accurate representation, and such an accurate depiction, which is good. That's a good thing for people that have read the book first. But I watched the movie first, came back and read this book, and it is entirely different. This is just another example of a movie that captures the essence. Not a single one of the trials is the same from the book to the movie. And that's good because after reading this book, none of those trials would have worked in the movie. It is so good. It has just as many 80s references and it is very, very original. Number six might come as a surprise to a lot of people. It is The Duff. This is very obviously a girl's book, very obviously a teenage girl's book, but as far as movies come, I am a huge sucker for those types of things. I love The Edge of Seventeen. I loved that recent movie that I can't remember the name of. I'll put the picture here. I do my research, as you can tell, very professional list right here. But this is the same one. It's very good. It ha it's dramatic, but it's like real world dramatic, because things that are big in high school are big to high schoolers. A lot of people make light of things that are difficult for high schoolers, but to them it's the biggest thing they've ever felt. Now, I can't say a lot about this book. It's been years since I've read it, but all I remember is that I love it and it really spoke to me even though it's 
for teenage girls. Number five is, in fact, Hank Green's book, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. This is a very unique book. I did a, a review on it. Please go watch that. You will love it. You will love this book. Uh, I'm not talking about the review, although you might love that too. I'm very good at this. But although this book is like wrapped kind of sci-fi, but incredibly interesting sci-fi story, what it's truly about is fame and people struggling with wanting fame, people struggling with changing themselves too much for fame. But the actual plot of the book with the aliens, the statues, is very good in itself. Hank Green is, of course, the younger brother of John Green, who's my favorite author of all time. But he, he truly steps out of his shadow in this. I thought he would have a very similar style to his brother, but it's very unique, and he's so, so good at plot. Number four is Half-Blood Prince. This is my all-time favorite Harry Potter book for the same reason as my all-time favorite Harry Potter movie. My favorite parts of the Harry Potter books aren't the action. It, it is the small things in the wizarding world that shows you how the wizards live. And this is the final book where they really show things like that because number seven is all-out war and all-out camping, just like the movie. Number three is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. His claim to fame and the thing that made him one of the biggest authors in the whole goddamn world. I got this when it came out. I got a signed copy and I skipped school that day and I read this shit from beginning to end in like 14 hours because I'm actually kind of a slow reader, even though I love reading. It is incredibly emotional. It's incredibly meaningful. It follows kids with cancer of all things. Like, who writes that? Who writes that and makes you want to go back and read it, even though it brings you to tears? It is just a beautiful, beautiful book about the maturity of children and teenagers and the struggles they go through and, and, and cancer. It gets a lot of flack for the fact that John Green is very smart and he writes smart characters. And I kind of see that. Like, teenagers don't normally talk like that, but some do, and it's a book. Spend your disbelief a little bit. Come on. Number two is The Martian by Andy Weir. Just another example of a, a movie that I watched before the book. And what's interesting about this is it is the big standout of movies that are almost exact adaptations of the book, but the book carries my attention so, so well. The main character of Mark Watney is hilarious and brilliant, and he narrates this so well. And what Andy Weir does is make makes him seem like he's talking to you through journal entries. Much like Passengers is on my top 10 favorite movies because it's like Castaway in Space, this is like Castaway on Mars. It's just very good, and it's actually kind of an inspiration to a lot of self-published authors, such as myself, because this was originally self-published online chapter by chapter until it got picked up just became this huge phenomenon across the world. And my number one of all time is Looking for Alaska by John Green. This is a book that I say is the best young adult novel ever written because it pushes the boundary of what a young adult novel can be. It shows like actual teenage life in a boarding school and their struggles with loss and the fact that they smoke, they drink, they give blowjobs. There's a blowjob scene of this that has plagued John Green with difficulties throughout his entire career as a writer. It's been removed from libraries and curriculums. I think that's brilliant. This is what teenage life is actually like. It doesn't gloss over it. And on top of that, it is just such a well-written book. The style of, like, the days before and the days after a tragedy. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it because it's so, it, it comes as such a shock to you and it's very moving and it's very good. And like I said, this is the standout and this is the benchmark for what young adult can be. So it got very serious at the end. Uh, my lists are very unstructured. Yeah, it has the 10 to 1, but I just kind of say what I want at the time about whatever I'm talking about, whether it's a little bit of a review or just why I personally like it. But I'm really enjoying doing this. I plan on doing it more. Kind of running out of ideas for lists. So if you have an idea, just let me know. But thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my other videos.